There are times when nothing quite hits the spot like a nice cold beer. But crafting that one-of-a-kind flavor doesn't come easy. And Lone Oak Farm in Olney, Maryland knows better than most just how much work goes into every pint. At this farm-to-glass brewery, it all begins in the field. And today is a special day for co-owner Chris Miller. So this is our first harvest from this ground. It's kind of multiple years of a vision that has led to this point. We bought the farm three years ago with the plan of putting the brewery here. And then part of that brewery plan was to grow as much of the ingredients on site as possible. So after a number of years of cultivating the ground, getting it ready for the crop, here we are today getting ready to harvest it. Whether it's your first harvest or you have decades of seasons under your belt, farmers are looking for similar signs when it's the right time for the combine. A way that you can tell when the grain is ready, ideally you want it to dry down, not die down. So you can see the heads are kind of tented over and towards the ground. That's good sign rather than it just falling over. That's called lodging. When it just lays down, that's not good because it makes it really difficult to harvest. With the conditions just right, it's time for the harvest. This particular variety of barley is Violetta two-row, known for its disease resistance and high yield. This 10 acres, we're hoping, will yield about 100,000 pints of beer. So we're literally looking at a field of beer right here. Sounds like the making of a good party, but the harvest is just one step before the pints can be poured. Now the barley will be sent to a dryer to lower the moisture content. Once it's dried down, we'll take a sample, send it off to the lab. We'll get a lot of the valuable information we need. Once all those tests check out, we can start malting with it right away. Malting is a centuries-old process dating as far back as the ancient Egyptians. And it is what ultimately determines the color, aroma, and flavor of beer. And it's where maltster Danny Love comes in. We take grain from the fields and we put it through the malting process. And during that process, we're changing kind of the chemical makeup of the grain so that when we give it to the brewer, he has something to make beer out of. Really, there's three phases. There's the steeping phase, there's the germination phase, and then there's the kiln drying phase. In the steeping phase, the grain is soaked in water to increase the moisture content, which will activate the existing enzymes and stimulate the development of new ones. Next is the germination process. During the germination phase, you'll see a lot of roots develop. That's a really good sign. We love seeing that. It's really encouraging to us as maltsters. And that simulates basically growth that would be happening if it was in the soil. That growth leads to the breakdown of proteins and carbohydrates and the opening of the barley starch reserves in a process called modification. Variables like temperature, airflow, and potential tangling of roots are important factors to control to ensure even germination. If we don't agitate it and stir it up, we'll create hot pockets that won't be good for the barley, or you know, it'll actually mat together and become like a block of ice, then <laughs> we'd not be able to move it. So by really stirring it up with the ribbon blender, we're breaking it up and we're also allowing it to breathe so that the finished product is something you know, that we can make beer out of. By heating the germinated barley in a kiln, starch reserves are trapped inside before being used up by the growing grain. At the brewery, those accessible starches are then turned into fermentable sugars by being hydrated with hot water to create an oatmeal-like substance called mash. The liquid or wort from the mash will then be separated from the spent grain. Then it's time for fermentation, where yeast is added and begins to multiply and eat the sugars, leaving behind carbon dioxide and alcohol. It's a lot of science, but that's why you have a brewmaster like Kevin Hilton. It's constantly evolving, so you really have to be aware of trends and techniques and things like that so that you can stay on top of the, the beer game. That desire to grow seems appropriate for a farm named after an historic oak tree that predates the Civil War. Here, Maryland was kind of a border state. The family that fought for the South lived on the other side of the tree, and this family here fought for the North. So neighbors were divided, and the tree is old enough that it was much smaller back then, but it was around during the Civil War when that divide was happening, and it marked the local property line. So there's just so much history to it that's still living today in every one of our beers. That mighty oak now stirs life into every batch of beer as the brewery's mash paddle is made from a fallen branch of the tree. 
There's deep lineage in the brewing culture that the mash paddle carries with it, kind of magical forces that make good beer and pass it on from generation to generation. So our paddle in every single beer, it comes in contact with oak wood from the oak tree. It's a testament to the preservation and adoration of the land that Lone Oak hopes will one day become synonymous with the beer they brew. Having the taste of the land in your beer is definitely going to differentiate our barley from the barley that was grown and even down in, in the Chesapeake Bay. There are going to be subtleties, and, and you know that's really what craft beer is about, is, is experimentation and, and subtlety. It took us a lot of team effort to pull this off, and, and again, we're, we're very fortunate that it did because at other places that I've been, we haven't been as fortunate, and it ends up as chicken feed. So chicken feed beer, you know, I'd, I'd rather have the beer. Cheers to that.